Hi guys, uh, welcome back. I'm Steve here with Fitness HQ, and uh, today's topic we're going to be doing a level two respiratory system for the gym instructor course. Uh, again, this is going to link in with the level three anatomy for sports massage, so you can cross link there a little bit as well. Uh, so let's get going first with the lesson objectives. If you want to stop and have a quick read over them, you can do. Um, we're going to crack on straight into it, uh, and the the sort of main thing we need to know what it is really, um, essentially it's breathing in, breathing out, yeah? Uh, so we breathe in, uh, as it says, we're taking oxygen um, into the lungs and we, we breathe out carbon dioxide. That is it in terms of what its function is, I suppose you could say. Uh, now often we call breathing in, inspiration, yeah? Um, or inhalation, you'll see them words come up quite a lot. Um, expiration or um, exhalation, breathing out, yeah? Uh, we've got some of the key terminologies of external and internal respiration as well, which is to do with uh, getting the core muscles involved a little bit as well, and it's the exchanging of gases either at the lungs or down by the cells in the muscles and things like that. So um, you can have a look at them as well if you want to. Now, starting with uh, breathing then, so we're going to look at first at the passage of air, so we're going to look at where it starts and the, the process of getting into the lungs and what happens in the lungs. Uh, so you can see from the diagram here, it's much better than I'll be able to draw it out. Uh, we've got the anatomy of the respiratory system. Uh, starting off uh, at the nose and mouth, um, it passes through a few different sections. So the, the back of the mouth, top of the throat region here, um, we call the pharynx. Uh, coming down a little bit to like th this part of your neck here, we've got the larynx, uh, which some people generally may have heard of. Um, into this section here, which we often refer to as the windpipe, um, this is called the trachea, um, as you can see. Now the trachea comes down and it actually branches off, obviously it's got to go to both lungs, um, assuming that you, you know we have two lungs. Um, so the two little branches that we have here are called bronchi, um, or a singular one is called bronchus. Uh, and obviously that then passes into the, the lungs themselves. Now the, the bronchi is a little bit like a tree. so what it does is it branches off. Yeah, so you've got the, the tree trunk, uh, which would be the bronchi, um, and then that branches off into all the different branches, uh, which we call bronchioles. So usually if you see the word eoles at the end of something, it's relating to a smaller version of the previous. Um, finishing at the ends of the, the lungs, it, the alveoli. Now the alveoli, uh, sort of picture a, uh, a piece of broccoli that you've picked up from the supermarket. All the tiny little green bits at the end are like the alveoli in the lungs, so uh, little tiny air sacs, and that's the part that actually fills up, uh, full of oxygen. Uh, to give you an idea of, of how many you've got, the average person tends to have about 300 million of these, so they're, you know, they're pretty small. Uh, each and every single one fills up with oxygen, uh, and it allows that oxygen to then pass into the bloodstream. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how it gets across. Um, first, let's have a look at the actual mechanics of breathing. So we've got we've got costal breathing. Uh, costal is the posh or the anatomical name for your ribs. So it's whereby you're using your ribs a lot to open up the chest cavity um, to get to get oxygen in. Um, and it kind of says here, you know, people who have got a sedentary lifestyle don't do much exercise. They they tend to suffer with that, and you know, it, it's difficult to breathe through through costal breathing because they don't really move that much in the first place. Uh, the, the main sort of breathing that we, we do generally is called diaphragmatic breathing, uh, breathing through the diaphragm essentially. Um, and let's say your diaphragm is like a dome, okay, and it sits just underneath the rib cage like so. Now when it's relaxed, this is essentially what it looks like. As we breathe in, what it does is it contracts and it pushes down and so it flattens out and basically opens up all the area inside, so it allows for more air to be, to be breathed in as well. Yeah? So, you know, if you think about a balloon when it's pumped up, it's got a lot more room for, for more air to be in there. That's essentially what your diaphragm does. So it pushes down and it draws air in. Um, and once you breathe out, it contracts. It, it pushes back up or it relaxes into its dome-like position again. It, you know, imagine you put pressure on the balloon now, you squash, you squash the balloon, it forces the air out, doesn't it? So, um, you know, that's what your diaphragm is doing essentially. So that's, you could say that's the main muscle really in terms of breathing. 
along with the, the other muscles called the intercostals, i.e. the in between the costals, these muscles help pull out and pull in the, the rib cage. Um, so uh, we've got lateral and thoracic breathing as well, which um, slightly different in that it, it, it's when the, the abdominals engage, the obliques engage, and they just assist sort of with, with forced exhalation, you could say. Um, I often refer to this as abdominal breathing. So if you were to breathe out, and then you try and force a bit more out, force a bit more out, what you'll find is that all of these muscles start engaging, and you'll start using more muscles um, to, to help with that forced breathing, you could say. And when you go for a run or something, you've not done it for a while, uh, your core muscles might hurt afterwards, and that's generally because you know, you've, you've been using these muscles to force air out. So let's look at gases exchange. You've got a picture there so you can see. Now I'm going to refer to, to my picture on the board at this point. Um, and this is the alveoli. So this is just one of your 300 million. So it's a little bit bigger than in real life. Now oxygen passes through there. Into the little air sac. And what happens when you blow up a balloon is that the pressure inside gets a lot bigger, it gets a lot greater. So the pressure inside this little air sac now is quite high. And as a result, it forces oxygen into the surrounding capillaries. Um, as you can see from the diagram here, you've got like a network of capillaries that surround the alveoli. Uh, as that oxygen passes in there, the pressure in the capillaries then rises. Um, so what you get in turn is carbon dioxide actually getting forced back into the alveoli. So on this side, we've got carbon dioxide actually being pushed back in. So it's a straight swap from oxygen to carbon dioxide. This whole process we call gaseous exchange. Um, I'm not going to write it down, you can see it up there. Uh, it's essentially exchange of gases, yeah? one for one. Um, this process will happen over here at the alveoli, but it's got to happen in the cells of the muscles in particular as well. So oxygen's got to get to the muscles, carbon dioxide back out. So it happens in two places throughout the body. Um, uh, that essentially is, is your, the, the process of gaseous exchange. Um, once your carbon dioxide has entered the alveoli, it then passes back up that tract. Um, and if we, if we go back to um, the, the actual airway itself, um, the, the, the way I always try and remember it is I think of the first letter of each one. Uh, sometimes you may be required to understand um, the correct passage. So I always tend to think, please leave that Bacardi Breezer alone. Yeah, uh, and that gives you the first letter of each of them. So we've got pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and finishing off with the, the alveolar line there. Uh, now, a little bit of an activity. It's probably more relevant after we've covered the circulatory system on this one, but it, it, it's covering parts of the heart. So uh, we can come back to that one after we've covered the circulatory system. Um, composition of air, uh, if you didn't know, the general environment is made up of 79% uh, uh, nitrogen, so that's just the general environment uh, from the Earth's atmosphere, you could say. Uh, we have, when we breathe in, 21%, so pretty much the rest of it is, is for oxygen. Uh, very, very little carbon dioxide, less than 1%, uh, and then very, very minimal, sort of negligible trace gases, yeah, depending on where you are in the country. Yeah, some, some places better than others. Uh, as you breathe out, nitrogen doesn't change. We don't actually use it. Um, it's not powerful. It's not beneficial. Uh, we only breathe out 17% oxygen. So of that oxygen we do take in, we actually only use 4%. Yeah, and as a result, we've got a 4% rise in carbon dioxide. And again, we don't use the, tra the trace gases, so they don't really change either. Uh, in terms of a few key phrases uh, for the respiratory system, we've got tidal volume, which is essentially just the amount of air you breathe in and are out. The more you exercise, or if you're exercising, obviously tidal volume will increase because you have deeper breaths, more oxygen going. Minute ventilation is just the same, but over a whole minute. So again, if you're exercising, that's going to increase. Breathing rate is just how many breaths you take within the minute. Um, a few short and long term effects then. Uh, the short term effect should be relatively simple in that it's an immediate effect, so 
time of volume, minute ventilation, breathing rate, they're all going to go up, yeah? Because you're breathing more, you breathe deeper, you need more oxygen to supply your muscles for the exercise. Um, whereas long term, what you tend to find is that you've got increased vital capacity, which is uh, basically the amount, the, the total amount or the maximum amount of air you can breathe out after the deepest breath. So if you can breathe in more air and breathe more out, you know, you're going to be getting more oxygen to your muscles. So it's going to be, you know, a better for your cardiovascular system, uh, better for your muscles, um, you know, more endurance. And again, increased vital capacity, so you're going to be able to breathe in more per breath. Um, decreased breathing rate, so because you should be fitter and your body should be taking in more oxygen with each breath, you shouldn't need to actually breathe as much. So if your breathing rate is quite high, um, working on the, the respiratory system and cardiovascular exercises is generally going to help with getting that lower, so you've got a more consistent breathing rate. Um, and increased diffusion efficiency as well. So your body will naturally develop your capillary networks. So the, the more you practice using the respiratory system, the more capillaries you'll actually use um, and utilize. And you know, as, as a result, more oxygen to the muscles. Perfect. Um, and that pretty much sums up the respiratory system. Nice, easy, quick fire topic there. Um, as always, we've got some recap questions for you. Um, have a go at these, see how you get them. There's only three this time, it's much shorter topic. Um, I'll see you again soon. Thanks.